when I think on all the things that you have made, the dark of night, it fades away. Stars shine bright and take center stage, you are king. King. Oh, hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, stays the same. Hallelujah, our God reigns. You are King. You are King, yes. Verses 31 through 37 this morning. To begin with, I want to remind you that as Americans, we should stop and think about our freedom. We possess certain rights and liberties that citizens of other nations do not enjoy. Because we're Americans, we can assemble here in this church today. And we can do what we're doing, worshiping. Because we're Americans, we're free to believe in a God, but we're free to believe in no God. Because we're Americans, we have the right to speak our mind on any issue that we choose. And if you'll come to my Sunday school class, you'll see it in action. Amen. <laughs> because we're Americans, we have a right to carry a Bible, pray in the name of Jesus, and to serve Him today. But did you know it's possible to be an American in this free country and still not be free? Let's stop and pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, we, we so we so look forward to coming and worshiping with your people because, Father, we, we experience your presence here like no other place. We have our quiet prayer time and our Bible studies at home and maybe even at work. But, God, there's something about coming together with the body of Christ to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask, Father, that you'll speak to our hearts today as we look into your word. It's in Christ's name that we pray today. Uh, amen. Today in our text, <laughs> I want to, uh, to, you to note that Jesus is speaking to a group of people who thought they were free. Let's look at our text this morning, and let me get to it. I haven't even turned over there to it. I've been thinking and not turning. Okay, John. John chapter, what did I say? John chapter what? John chapter 8, what verse? 31. Okay, we're going to look right there in John chapter 8, verse 31. Okay, and we're going to read through 37. So look what it says. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. And then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say 
that we should be set free. And Jesus said to them, Verily and verily I say to you, I tell you this, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Can I get an amen? amen? Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Deed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you're looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you what I have seen in my father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your father. You know, as we look at this text, we, we can uh, recognize that Jesus is talking to some people that are kind of got their minds made up about who they are. These were Jews who were saying, we're Abraham's descendants, we're not slaves. They believed that because they were the sons of Abraham, they enjoyed spiritual freedom as well as physical freedom. Well, Jesus lets them know that because they're sinners, they're still slaves to sin. And the same truth is repeated by Paul in Romans chapter 6. Jesus wants us all to know that the power, <clears throat> that he has the power to make men truly free. He reminds them that because they are slaves to sin, they're not really free at all. And then Jesus makes this bold proclamation that he says that since he is the son, he has the power to make them free. You see, a, fra sli uh, sorry, a slave is not a member of a family, is he? But a son is. These verses give us some facts about what it means to be free indeed. And that's what I want us to look at. I want us to focus on the Lord's words here in John chapter 8, specifically in verse 32 and 36, where we first identify the source of our freedom that we have in Christ. Jesus says the source of our spiritual freedom in verse 32 is the truth. The truth. So what are we talking about the truth? This refers to that which is true in respect to God and in the execution of His purposes in Jesus Christ. In other words, the truth Jesus refer, or refers to is the whole truth regarding, listen, the whole truth regarding who Jesus is and what He has done for sinners. This is the whole truth about Christ. So do you know the whole truth about Christ? Do you know who He really is? Do you know the details of Jesus, and do you know completely what he's done for you? The truth about Jesus is seen all around us so that lost sinners are without excuse when they stand before God. Romans 1, chapter, chapter 1, verses 18 through 20 gives us insight into this. Listen to what it says. The wrath of God is being revealed against heaven, against all the goodness and the wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, because God has made it plain for them, look what it says, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood for what has been made so that people are without excuse. You know, <clears throat> in one respect, that's sad because so many people reject Christ. And yet the Bible says that God has made creation and made all of this for us that we can look at it and know that there is a creator behind all of this. This is not uh, an accidental explosion of Big Bang. But God has hung the stars and let the earth have day and night and set it on its axis. The truth about Jesus is found in the Gospels. <clears throat> First of all, in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 4. For what I have received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. Look what else the Gospel tells us in Romans 4, 25. It says, He was delivered over to death for our sins and raised to life for our sins justification. The truth about Jesus is found in the pages of the Word of God. And John chapter 5 verse 39 says, you study the scriptures diligently, I'm sorry, diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me for life. The truth about Jesus Christ is revealed 
to the sinner by the Holy Spirit through the scriptures to open the eyes of the blind and guide all of us to light. The truth about Jesus is revealed to the sinner by the Holy Spirit. He opens his eyes and he leads him, the sinner, to Christ. John chapter 6 verse 44 also goes on to say, No one can come to me, this is Jesus speaking, and I want, you, I want to drive this point home. This scripture is so important. So many people say, well, there's different ways to get to God. There's different ways to have eternal life. I want you to look at John 6, 44. No one can come to me, that is to Jesus, unless the Father who sent him draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. So the source of our freedom is found in Jesus Christ alone. And next we need to consider the scope of our freedom Jesus says in 36 that we have been made, that he makes a person free, and they are free indeed. The first word translated free uh, comes from a word that means to set at liberty. That's what it means. It's a picture of someone liberating a slave from bondage. However, the second word translated free refers to one who is free born. You see, there are people who are freed from bondage, and there are people who are born free and have never been enslaved. But for us, all of us, we were born in sins. We were born as slaves, and it is Christ who delivers us. I want us to consider that freedom we enjoy as Americans was not cheap. It's not cheap because over one million brave soldiers paid for our freedom with their blood. Let's consider for a moment those who signed the Declaration of Independence. Let's go back to that day and time. Five signers were captured by the British as traitors and they were tortured before they died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons in, Revo in the Revolutionary War and another had two sons captured. Nine of the 56 fought and died from wounds of their hardships in the Revolutionary War. But they signed the Declaration of Independence knowing full well what it was going to cost them. In comparison to their spiritual freedom, it was nothing. They lost it all to gain freedom. But while the price of our nation's freedom was costly and it was bloody, it pales in comparison to the cost of our spiritual freedom. Our spiritual freedom was paid for at Calvary. It was there that he became the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only our sins, but for the sins of the entire world. We must not forget the words that we find written in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 through 6. It says there, As for you, you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of, of the kingdom of the air, and the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature, our flesh, and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving God's wrath. But because of His great love, His great love for you, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our trespasses, it's by grace you have been saved, and God raises us up, raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Can I get a hallelujah? What has God done for us? Listen, we were dead in our trespasses and sins, but because of God's great love for us, He offered us salvation. He offered us an exit ramp on the highway to hell. That exit ramp, you know, you're, you're driving down the main and it's interstate hell. That's what it is. And you're driving down it as a sinner. And, and all sometime in your life you come up and you see an exit sign coming up. And it says Jesus. And that's God offering, calling you to Jesus. And saying that if you will follow Jesus, if you'll take this ramp, it will change your ultimate eternal destination. For there is no other name by which we can be saved except the name of Jesus. In Christ, slaves are set free. In Christ, the bondage of sin is forever broken. The flames of hell are quenched. 
and the fierceness of divine wrath is appeased. In Christ there is life, there is liberty, and there is pursuit of godliness. You see, in Christ you are freed. And we should live our lives as such that we are not, we do not allow sin of the world to entice us away from following Christ. There's so much in the world, especially for our young people. Let's face it, they're not where we older people are. And they're saying, hallelujah, I'm never going to be old. <laughs> Let me tell you about old people. They just look that way on the ins- outside. On the inside, we're just like you. We're just like you. We get enticed by the world. We, get, try, tr- we try to follow our peers sometimes, and we need to be following Christ. When David Nasser talked about temptation, it, it just hit me right in the, where it needed to hit me. I wish we all could have heard that message. But he talked about temptation coming to us, and it comes to all of us. Temptation of, of itself is not sin. As one said, which one of you said, it's when we, Cody, I think you said it's when we take the bait. You see, it's like dangling a, a candy bar out there in front of you. If you like candy bars, a carrot if you're a horse, no horses in here. It, it could be Lay's potato chips for some of us, and dangles out in front of us, and, and it's just enticing us to follow it instead of following Christ. And we have to determine in our mind before we get there to that point of temptation that I'm following Christ no matter what it costs me. No matter what people say about me, no matter what my friends say about me, I choose Christ. 